Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'd like to talk about the best HDR settings HDR for you. HDR is a scam! Tony, just because you have a toaster as a screen doesn't mean HDR is I a scam. I guy on YouTube! Yeah, yeah, you, you saw a guy. Okay, let's, let's start over here, I'm sorry. Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. Let's try this again. Today I'd like to present the best HDR settings for Star Wars Outlaws on LG OLED TVs. That also includes yeah, the question, should you use HGH or dynamic tone mapping on? And what about the FTDA, the fine-tuned dark area settings? So let's get into it. So the first thing what we need to talk about is, of course, what picture settings on the LG OLED TVs I actually recommend. And in regards of yeah, playing games, I'm always using the game mode. I know it's not the best on certain models like the CX, G2 and uh, also the G3 in regards of color volume, color saturation, stuff like that. I think the G2 actually resolved the issue with the game mode and yeah, with the colors, but I still recommend the game mode over any other mode because of yeah, input lag, stuff like that. And it's just it's just much better and, and it, it just works, okay? So the only thing what I have changed on the game mode is the sharpness because on my CX and also on the G2, the sharpness is set out of the box to 10, which is over sharp in the picture. So make sure you set sharpness to zero. And there's one more setting I would like you to change or at least to verify the color temperature setting on your LG OLED TV. As far as I can remember on the LG CX, the standard or out of the box setting is medium, which makes the picture in my opinion or according to the Calibration standard, way too bluish, so warm too on the LG CX would be more accurate. On the LG G2, as far as I can remember, the out of the box setting is warm zero and it would be more accurate to set this to warm 50. Unfortunately, I don't have any other numbers for any other TVs because I just have the CX or the LG and the LG G2, but I'm pretty sure they are very similar to each other. So. If you don't like warm 2 or warm 50, then don't bother, okay? Set this up as you like it because at the end, it's you who is playing on your TV and not me. And now let's move on to the HDR in-game settings what we have in Star Wars Outlaws. And I would strongly recommend that you actually watch, I would actually ask you to watch my HDR review about this game to get an understanding how good HDR is in this game because I don't want to repeat everything here like black level race and stuff like that. But what we have to talk about, and this is very important, is the fact that the HDR in-game settings are always outputting 200 nits too low. So and that means that if, let's say you have an LG ZX TV with a maximum peak brightness, let's say 800 nits and 800 is one of the values what you can choose in Star Wars Outlaws. But if you would use 800 nits, then the maximum peak brightness on your screen is maximum or roughly around 600 to 650 nits. So that means for the LG ZX or any other TV, you need to increase this value, the HDR settings in the game, always by 200 nits. So again, if you have a TV with 1000 nits maximum peak brightness capability, you need to set this value to 1200. So let's talk about the brightness setting what we have in this game. And after testing, I actually recommend to change this to minus five to have a a better contrast, a slightly better contrast in the game. I mean, we never get rid of the HDR black level rays, unfortunately not with the brightness setting. We're talking about the FTDA setting soon. But again, in terms of the brightness setting for all TVs, all LG OLED TVs, the HDR in-game settings, my recommendation is minus five. And now let's talk about the FTDA settings, the fine-tuned dark area settings for the LG OLED TVs. But Keep in mind, in order to use the FTDA settings or in order to have any impact on your screen, you must, you must activate VRR on your console or PC. Otherwise, the FTDA setting has no impact whatsoever on the picture. But what is now my recommendation in regards of the FTDA settings? So, and this depends on what tone mapping format you're actually using. Because if you like to use Dolby Vision on the Xbox or HGH, then the FTDA setting should be minus six, maximum minus six. 
if you like to use dynamic tone mapping on for a yeah, brighter picture in general, then the FTDA setting should be set to minus 13. And now let's try to answer the question HGIG versus dynamic tone mapping on. And this is very, very hard to answer. So by the way, dynamic tone mapping off for me personally on my CX and G2 is not an option at all. But the problem is now we have, of course, so many different LG OLED TVs nowadays. And um, the higher the peak brightness of those TVs, the better HGIG looks actually. So my recommendation is still actually HGIG if you like to have the most accurate HDR picture. But I can see why some people don't like HGIG because even in Star Wars Outlaws, it's sometimes just a little bit too dark. But on the other hand, dynamic tone mapping on, unfortunately, is just destroying most of the picture because it's just overblowing or over brighten the picture. And in regards of specular highlights, um, you lose a lot of details because of dynamic tone mapping on. So, but at the end, again, it's up to you because you sit in front of your TV and not me, but my recommendation would be HGHG. Okay, so let's summarize what we talked about in this video. First of all, the HDR peak brightness setting in the game must be always 200 nits over the maximum peak brightness capability of your TV. Then in regards of the brightness setting, the HDR in-game brightness setting, I would actually recommend minus five, but this value is absolutely up to you. In regards of the FTDA settings, it depends if you like to use HGIG, Dolby Vision, or dynamic tone mapping on. For Dolby Vision and HGIG, minus six, for dynamic tone mapping on minus 13. And at the end, it's absolutely up to you if you prefer HGIG, Dolby Vision or dynamic tone mapping on. Just make sure the FTDA settings are set correct. Okay, my friends, so let me know in the comment section, how do you like the picture with my recommended settings in regards of the yeah, FTDA settings, because this is really the most important part. Also, of course, don't forget the peak brightness issue, what we have in the game. But again, let me know in the comment section, what do you think? What do you think about HDR in this game in general? I personally think it's an average implementation. That's it. It's not bad. It's still better than SDR in my opinion, but it's not a Cyberpunk or a Horizon Forbidden West uh, implementation, unfortunately. Anyway, thank you very much for watching me. I see you guys next time. Bye.